we went through a lot of work to come up with this general element stiffness matrix for the truss that was associated with the uh, global orientation. So these were global displacements in ha and this transformation then got us what was happening on the ends of the truss member in the global orientation, leaving us uh, this big thing. Right? And you know, we had started from this little guy that's all in the local system and transformed it all the way out. Well, there's another way that we could approach this and it involves uh, the following, and that is this thing called the transformation matrix. One of these is going to transform geometry and another is going to transform uh, statics. So let's go back. When we were looking at the displacements that it happened at one end of the member at I, then we decomposed it into two separate pieces. Globally what happened with the D, capital DIX projecting it back on to the local axis that was cosine phi of this global. And then we did the same thing for a Y. If we sum those two, we get then the net axial displacement at end I. Do the same thing over here at, um, at the far end at J. And what we're going to end up with is uh, the opportunity to write the following matrix kind of expression. Notice that we'll have the local stuff on the left hand side and we'll have the global stuff over here on the right hand side. And so if we rewrite these two equations in the following very special way, here's what we're going to end up with. We're going to have a big matrix here. You don't know quite why it's so big, but you'll see it here in just a second. And then you've got the DIX and the DI. Y, that's those two, and then you have the others also at the other end, the X and the Y components. So this is a 4 by 1, this is a 2 by 1, so that means we need a 2 by 4 to make this work out right. And that's where we come in then and say, all right, we've got cosine of phi times DIX, that's C for the cosine plus sine times the DIY but for DI we don't have any of the J contributions so that's a zero and a zero. Likewise here on the other one then we get zero zero a C and an S. And this thing right here the two by four is this transformation matrix. Okay, It's the geometric or the deformation or dis actually better is the displacement transformation matrix, transforming the global displacements to the local axial displacements. Right? And so that's where we end up with this little simple expression, D equals TD. Now down on the other end, um, this is the right idea here, but I don't know that I really like the symbols and the, the uh, case that we've got here that needs to be fixed a little bit. So we're going to fix that here in just a second, but um, notice that we're going to go, instead of going from global to local, this time we're going the other way around, local to global, which gives you a hint of why there might be a transpose of something going on here. right? So <clears throat> note what happens here. We're looking at, here's the axial force at end I in the member, and then simple statics relationships to take that and project it onto the X, global X and Y axes. See, that's the difference, right? We're, we're now projecting the local onto the global instead of the other way around, which is what we were doing before with the displacements. I do that for both ends, and note what's going to happen here. Again, a little bit different than what we were setting up uh, before, right? This time, we only have two local forces. We've got the, uh, we were actually calling these Q before, the QI and the QJ. Oops, that would be the same there. All right, so you've seen it written in both ways, so I'm, I'm just going to the little Q version here for a reason you'll see in just a moment. And then that's got to be equal 
then ultimately we've got all of these folks here. So we've got the, I'm going to leave this as uh, F, this is in the global system. All right, so we were using big Q's before. I know this is a little confusing to be flip-flopping on you. I'm going to just try to connect up a couple of different things we've been doing and all at once. And so, of course, notice here, you've got a 4x1, you have a 2x1, so this time we need a 4x2 to make that work out right. And so notice here, again, QIX and FIX are really the same thing here. So that's equal to a C times a Q, little QI, or this one right there, and it doesn't have anything with the J there. And then the other one's an S and a zero, and then we go to the other end, and we end up with that. And notice that is the same thing as our transformation matrix up there, it's just been transposed. So this would have been a little bit better written as this is going to be Q equal T transpose times little q. Now, here's where this really plays out in a nice, important, big way, right? And that is, if we go back to our basic element stiffness matrix, little q equals k times a little d, all in the local system, right? Now, d, the little d, right, that was given to us by our transformation matrix up above. So now there's your global displacements at the end of the member. It's just the element here. And then, oh wait a minute, if we substitute in here, we pre-multiply, then we get capital Q here. And so this little guy right there is all for the element is going to be the element stiffness matrix represented in the global coordinate system. And that, with this little part here, all this stuff, the, the transformation matrix, when we multiply all that out, then we're going to get back to um, that complicated looking expression, that one right there. And partly there, the way we get there is don't forget that this little k is EA over L times the little square matrix. That's what we were, that was coming from right there, right? So this is now taking the little local, local situation, local, local, and getting in there, global, global, which is what we're going to need when we start assembling this um, element into the bigger global structural stiffness matrix.